The study is entitled Factors Related to the Rate of Rhodontical Induced Tooth Movement. Bonjour de Genève. My name is Stavros Hilaridis and I'm professor and head of the Department of Orthodontics at the University of Geneva, Switzerland. Together with my colleague, Dr. Katrin Janopoulou, senior lecturer in the Department of Periodontology of our university, we will discuss our paper published in the May issue 2013 of the journal. The majority of our knowledge on the rate of tooth movement is based on animal studies which have shown that the rate of tooth movement may vary substantially amongst and also within individuals. However, is there evidence that these findings are also valid for humans? Furthermore, we wondered how certain clinical situations influence the rate of tooth movement. For example, to what degree does interference, such as adjacent teeth blocking partly the tooth movement, influence the rate of tooth displacement. In other cases, such as the presence of a cross bite, to what extent does the occlusal interference from the antagonist tooth affect the rate of tooth movement? In order to elucidate these points, we performed an experimental single tooth movement in 30 subjects, 11 to 43 year olds, who presented severe crowding and needed first or second premolar extraction treatment. We applied a force of 1 newton to induce buccal tipping during 8 weeks on a total of 58 premolars. 43 contralateral premolars were not subjected to orthodontic tooth movement and served as controls. The amount of tooth movement was evaluated in the dental cast obtained before and after the 8 week period. Among the 58 experimentally moved premolars, we differentiated 33 with no obstacle, 6 with intra-arch interference, this means movement being partially blocked by adjacent teeth, and 17 with an inter-arch interference, this means interfering antagonists. Let us now present some of our results. The experimentally moved premolars were displaced on average a little more than 2 mm. However, there was a large range in displacement of these premolars from as little as half millimeter to more than five millimeters. How can we interpret the significant variation in the sample? It seems that neither the gender of the subjects nor the location of the tooth movement, that is, in the maxilla or in the mandible, were significant factors contributing to the observed variation. Among the young individuals less than 16 years of age, the amount of premolar displacement during this two-month period was larger than for the older subjects, which corroborates the findings of previous animal studies. Apart the factor of age, the presence of an obstacle in the form of adjacent teeth blocking partly tooth movement seems to decrease the amount of tooth displacement, possibly because the applied force initiates the displacement of not only one but multiple teeth. Last but not least, the presence of occlusal interference from the antagonist tooth also seems to decrease the amount of tooth displacement. This kind of occlusal friction may have variable influence on tooth displacement, depending on the functional conditions of the stomatognathic system of the subject and the possible influence of parafunctional habits. Before we finish, we would like to thank Dr. Alexander Dudis for the tremendous work he has put in this project and all of you for watching this short video.